Be the first to know in SMP TV. Um, last year, 2022, I think the first July, and uh, the Minister for Information, Kojo Ponkroma, had a statement officially about to abandon. Say the government of Ghana, Ghana by after cabinet meeting on IO margin say. Ghana will seek for an, a bailout from the IMF, International Money, Monetary Fund. Into the finance minister should start engagement with the IMF. In the kind of reata, it will coin a call America, which may be the IMF boss, Mami, Christina, and in the deed in Como, and other host of things. Now, Yamiadum, Ghana, and IMF bailout, no? in early this year, and IMF bail around May, June. And a buy and my IMF and my is kakra say yen fan chassis so six hundred million dollars a buy. Some make as a gun if say the next six hundred million dollars and everybody to my idea finance your budget for next year. Now IMF discussion say cost no and I'm a some make as a IMF or chief mission and as a mission chief for Ghana. IMF for mission chief for Ghana. Our friend Stefan Rudet. And a uh, senior, a senior in journalism, uh, Bernard Koku Avle, Edin Komo on uh, a sister station City TV. So now, I am a boss to Ghana, Stefan Rudet, I deliver good news. Edin, I'm a Ghana Nibia, what's uh, your voice? And I don't pay about Ghana economy. According to Stefan Rudet, you know, they are surprised. My main kind of state was the Ghana's economy activities, I have to say, have surprised us on the outside. You remember that in the program we were projecting economic growth of 1.5% for this year. Now we have the outcome of the first half of the year and we are about 3%. And so you can see that there are signs that are encouraging. According to Stefan Rudet, you know, IMF, World Bank, Ghana economy this year it will grow at 1.5%. But I'm about Ghana and seeing a big engagement with Ken of Real Ghana and Kratan Ghana and Kratan Semfei. Ghana a grow times two, 1.5. Ghana a grow three percent. A encouraging. Yemko Nkuti, Ura Efreno, Stefan Rudet. We in what touch a bit about Ghana. Your programs a a buying lunch program be Efreno. Ghana a year livelihood empowerment against poverty. Kofo program or the buy in the year 2008, you know, IMF asked CD, you know, or the ne kasa etuja or chilema. That program now Ghana buy a Kofo introduced way back 2008, you know, a year jumapa. We or the tuja coming forward say IMF any discussions with Ghana we a DNS also be my ever go and listen to the good news from Stefan Rudet, IMF chief mission in Ghana. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. We, we we were also assessing that growth would be of the order of one and a half percent for this year. What we're seeing now is above that. So we will have to we will have to revise our, our growth projection up in the context of this uh, in the context of this review. And this is of course very good news because it means that in spite of. Uh, the challenges that the Ghanaian economy has faced, the high inflation, the, the loss of market access for the government, and uh, in spite of that, the economy is resilient and, and growth is still around 3% at the current juncture. So very, very good news indeed. But does it matter where the growth is coming from or at this stage growth is growth? Because I had people ask, for example, that if you had growth from industrial or even agri, because they employ more people, that's a better outlook, but growth from services, even services is great, they feel like that's not the type of growth that you really want to see. At this level, does it matter where the growth is coming from, or are you just interested in the figure? Well, we'd love to see broad-based uh, growth, and we're confident that at some point this is what is going to happen. But, but I, think, I think the Ghanaians should take pride in having good performance in the services sector. Uh, traditionally, services are very important for job creation. Uh, so, um, you know, seeing, seeing a strong performance on that front is very good news. Mm. Inflation as well, you did indicate that 54 coming down to 40 is great, but 40 is still very high. The, the challenge is, whilst you, you need to let people know we've made progress, there's a view also that if we sell a premature message of recovery, people will get complacent. I'll give you an example. 68% of the population, food accounts for half of their expenditure. 
full inflation is still 51.9%. So that's a very serious situation. So I understand what you're saying with inflation, that it's come down from 54, but how do you balance that progress with the reality that a general inflation of 40% and a food inflation of 51.9% is still very, very high? We, we have to acknowledge, and I believe the authorities uh, acknowledge the, the reality. Uh, um, the Central Bank of Ghana is not comfortable with an inflation rate as 40%. This is why uh, the bank has tightened its monetary policy stance, precisely to bring inflation down. But our point is that this is working. Those policies are working, and we are on track to see even lower inflation rates going forward. And this is a source of uh, hope. Um, but, of course, more, more needs to be done. Uh, and the situation, a difficult situation like the one Ghana was facing last year, cannot be turned around just, uh, you know, instantly. It takes time. Uh, that calls for patience. That calls for perseverance on, on the policy front. And uh, uh, this is what we are <laughs> seeing. This is great. I'm not trying to have an economic debate with you, but there's a strong view among some economists in Ghana that the central bank's inflation targeting doesn't really work partly because they feel some of the inflation is supply side, is cost issues and not monetary issues. So the constant adjustment of the policy rate is not really the solution to inflation. So that there has to be other things on the real sector that brings inflation down. So I just don't want your comment generally on, on that because there's a view that indeed the central bank adjusting the rate actually crowds out important uh, uh, credit to private sector. So maybe they need to take a second look at their inflation targeting policy. Is this something within the remit of the review to look at and to comment on in the short to medium term? No, the, 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 program, the program has been designed based on the, the monetary policy framework that the, the, the Bank of Ghana is, uh, is uh, using, which is indeed a, an inflation targeting regime. Um, and we have been very comfortable with that regime. Um, and quite frankly, uh, you know, bringing inflation down is not just about monetary policy. It's the total package of the policies that are being implemented within the context of the program that, are, that, that matters. Uh, the fiscal consolidation effort is very important in this respect. Uh, monetary policy and the, the tight monetary policy is very important. And I think we are uh, getting comfort from the fact that we are seeing in the numbers that this is working, all right? We have a 15 percentage points reduction in the inflation rate since, since the beginning of the year. So, so it is working. It's going in the right direction. Your press conference was addressed by the Minister of Finance and the Governor. Are you concerned about the pressure the Governor is facing around the losses that the Central Bank had to take from its lendings to the, the government? I know those questions didn't come up at the press conference, but if you follow the news in Ghana, there was a demonstration last week about that. Some are calling for the governor's head. For a program like this, you work with the fiscal and the monetary authorities. For the monetary authorities to be under severe pressure from civil society and opposition, how does that affect the delivery of the program? Uh it doesn't really affect the delivery of the program. I think what we are seeing on our side when we engage with the Ghanaian authorities is excellent collaboration between the fiscal authorities, the Ministry of Finance in this case, and the Central Bank of, of Ghana. And Ghana facing very, economic, very, very difficult economic and financial situations in, in a context like this one. This is something that is very, very important, and, and we are seeing that. Um, as far as the central bank is, is, is concerned, indeed the central bank has incurred uh, losses in, in 2022. 20, uh, um, and, uh, you know, the, the domestic debt restructuring has had a, a, an impact. 